Welcome to another video tutorial on our channel Learn at No Star. Today we are going to discuss about an important and interesting SQL concept, indexes. This might also be a little confusing for some of us, so we will try to break it down step by step. An index is a physical structure associated with a table or view. The index is a B-tree structure having root, intermediate and leaf levels. Imagine data stored sequentially against data stored as a tree structure. It will always be faster to navigate through the branches in a tree structure. Index are created to speed up retrieval of rows while fetching data through a SQL query from the table or the view. The perfect analogy here is that of a physical book. The table of contents at the beginning of the book tells us on which page we can find information about a specific topic. If the index did not exist, we would be going through each and every page of the book to find the specific information we were looking for. That would have been a very time-consuming and tedious process. Similarly, a database index is built on one or more columns in the table of view. The columns included in the index are called index keys. This index then enables the database to find the row or rows associated with the key values quickly and efficiently. Let's try to understand the concept in a better way with the help of an example. One of the best examples for a purpose is that of a physical phone book. A phone book contains the last name, first name and phone number. The data is sorted alphabetically based on last name and first name. This makes it easy for us to scroll down the list of names and find the correct information. Let's suppose we have the same information in a database table. As we keep on adding data to our table, the data will be stored in an unordered way in the absence of an index. This is called a heap. Now if we want to retrieve the phone number of a particular person, the database will have to search each and every record in the table to find the match. This is called a table scan and it will continue till the last record in order to find all the matches. Now we all understand that an unnecessary table scan can have performance penalty. So the better way to do this is to create an index on this table. This brings us to the two common types of index. A clustered index will physically sort the data based on the columns included in the index. This entire structure, including the base table data, is called a clustered index. When a query navigates through the clustered index tree to the base table data, this is called a clustered index seek. Now, if we need to execute the same query we tried earlier, it will definitely be a faster search. Since the data is physically sorted, all the matching records will be stored at descent to each other. The search will start from the first record and continue till the last match is found. So now the table scan knows when to exit. Since in case of a clustered index, the data is physically sorted on the index keys, there is a limitation of only one clustered index on a table since the data can only be physically sorted in one way. The index can be created easily using the below statement. An interesting thing to note here is that these index can be created by default while defining the primary key constraint on the table. The other type of the index is a non-clustered index. In a non-clustered index, the base data is stored as a separate entity. Instead, there are row locators or pointers that point to the base data at the leaf level. The base data itself can be stored in two different ways, in an unordered structure as a heap or as a physically sorted clustered key index. If it is a heap structure, the row locators will point to the base data table records or base table data records. In case of a clustered index structure, the row locators will point to the clustered index keys. Since the base data is separated from the index structure, we can have any number of non-clustered index on the table. The index can be easily created using the below statement. Also, one thing to note is that the non-clustered index only have the information of the columns on which the index has been created. 
So if we want to fetch non-key columns, we might need to fetch those columns from the base table. So we might need to do a join to the base table. One way to avoid this is to use the include keyword to add non-key columns to the leaf level of the non-clustered index to bypass and execute fully covered index queries. So these queries that include this include keyword to add non-key columns are known as fully covered queries. A clustered index does not have this problem as all the data is physically sorted and stored in the same location. So all the columns are present with all the physical data that has been stored in the same location. As with the clustered index, the non-clustered index is also created by default if a unique key constraint is specified on the table. All these default options of creating a clustered or non-clustered index using the primary key or the unique key constraints can be overridden by explicitly specifying the type of index you need that particular constraint to create. So this is all about the indexes and I hope that the information provided in this video was useful. If you found the video helpful then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also please like, comment and share this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.